So tonight we're going to jump in to the subject of making small drawers. Before making something like this, I want to mock up. Now, when, when I first made this tool cabinet, one of the things that I always felt some question about was how high I made these cubby holes. I wanted them to be high enough that I could get my hand in and I could see what was in there. But when I made the design, I wasn't sure if I was ever going to add drawers or not. But once I got using it, and I guess I've been using it for about 10 years, right? I guess close to that. I think it's time that I do something about this utility. Because you notice I've got these little odds and ends over in this one, you know, like a feeler gauge, you need that, right? Some extra handles, some brass ferrules, things you need, but they're cluttering up. So uh, what I'm gonna do is put some drawers in here and I wanna make them such that they, they look good, they're functional, but also they don't still inhibit my hand getting in, say, to grab uh, the plane out of here or whatever it is. So I don't want them to come down too far in the space. So I'm going to put them in the top level here. And so I, I started out thinking about two and an eighth inch. And when I stuck that in there, I cut a little cardboard piece and stuck it in there to simulate the drawer front. It felt too wide when I got the two and an eighth. This is two inches wide. And that's what I ended up landing on. So I just cut them and put them all the way across so we can get a visualization of what these drawer fronts are gonna be when they're done. So there's my cardboard mock-up, and, or as we say in Lowell, cardboard. <laughs> uh, and over here I've got my cards, my card scrapers. <laughs> <laughs> my, my card scrapers um, over here. And I, and I like that this, this, me and this card scraper rack go way back. It used to be horizontal on my bench until I built this cabinet. So I like it how it is. I like having a lot of them for when we have classes and keeping a lot of card scrapers sharp. So I'm not cutting that down. I'm not adding a fifth drawer front. That might trouble those who are watching who have strong... Uh, affinity for symmetry because I've got a little asymmetry going on here and uh, one of my friends in the furniture masters who this group is going to be treated to on Saturday is Garrett Hack and he loves to play around with the asymmetry in furniture design so this is a little nod to Garrett. He also likes putting little drawers in things which mm -hmm. got me thinking about I mean I should put those Details. little drawers in. All right so here we go. We've got our little drawer fronts. I'm happy with the design. <laughs> the design. <laughs> it's basically a square piece of cardboard. <laughs> I'm happy with the front design, the size. I know what the rest is going to be. Basically, I'm going to make a drawer very similar to this to go into each of those cubby holes. But we've got a little issue with uh, the runners because it's up in the air like this. I have no runners for it to ride on. So I could tack some strips like runners against the side, but I wouldn't like seeing those. It looked just sloppy to me to have the runners exposed like that. So, and I didn't want to make the drawer fronts overlap the runners and lose drawer space. So I'm going to put a side slot like in these little drawers. They're so light, it'll be nice and it'll work well. And I'll just put a, a little strip inside there. But basically, I'm going to construct them just like your classic traditional drawers with half blind dovetails in the front and then through dovetails in the back. But because it's small, it's going to be a very small amount of dovetails. We're only going to have like a two tooth uh, <laughs> dovetail and a single pin in the middle. We do have plans and a course for that toolkit cabinet if you're interested. Yes, it's a little smaller cabinet. version. It's just two inches, I believe, in height and width. And the cubbies are a little bit lower, but you still could do the same thing I'm about to do if you preferred to. All right, so the first thing you have to do to make a drawer is size your parts. We don't have time to go through that whole process. I don't know if we have time to make the whole drawer, but we're going to go for it. But we've got all these parts already dimensioned. Now, the fun thing about small drawers is figuring out how light can I make the various elements. You can go pretty small and have a nice 
a little operational drawer. So with my drawer sides, let me see what I ended up going with here. Um, here's a little trick to measure narrower things. Just put two together and then you can measure across. Uh, and I'm a little over, I'm a 32nd over 5 eighths. Okay, so that means I'm 5 16th strong a 64th on one. Okay, so they're 5 16ths generally thick. And then the drawer front, I made, I made that 9 16 thick. So pretty thin material there, but that's what we're going to go with. We're going to go ahead and start marking out. Now to mark out dovetails on a drawer like this, you've got to mark the overlap lengths of everything on the corners. So we're going to begin with, let's begin with that front dovetail. So you notice I already marked, I put some pencil marks on here. And this is how you stay oriented and keep things organized. This little scribble mark is the outside. These are my two sides. The scribble tells me it's the outside, it's the top, and it's the front. So that's my front side. Now here's my drawer front. I've got the scribble here. I've got a five because this is actually the fifth drawer. And I'm going to have my tail, my dovetails are going to actually be three eighths long. So I set up this one marking gauge with a three eighths, put a little sticker on there so I wouldn't confuse it. And I'm going to score a line right around all of my, both of my drawer side front for the half blind dovetail. And then I'm going to have to come to this piece and score on referencing from the back the overlap of that very same half blind dovetail. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. So we're going to just score right across here. Flip it. And so that's my 3 8 step. Now I can go around the front of my drawer sides and I'm just going to lightly score. I just do usually just two, two light scoring cuts here. And this is nice white pine, so it's kind of fun to work with and forgiving. And then I also want a line on the top and bottom of this for cutting these tails. So I'm just lining it on the block and I'm just going to score right across. There we go. Now we can go ahead and mark the rest of it. The rest of the overlaps, like that through dovetail in the corner, is equal to the thickness of our material. So it's just over 5 16 So I can use my material and set the pin on the marking gauge so it just overlaps slightly. And now I can score around these parts. So this is, this is set a little shallower. I wanted a longer dovetail for the front where you're going to see them, you know, those half blinds. Okay, and let's see, I've got to do one more on the top here. This gets a top score in the back. And then this is my back material. I just have to go around here. I'm not sure, um, Tom, do, does it matter if all three pieces, four pieces are the same thickness? Uh, these are all the same thickness, these, these sides, but the front is thicker because we're doing a half blind. So on the inside of the front, we're going to be doing the same marking gauge because this is going to be set in off the back. Okay, there we go. All right, now. Set these, your front and the back aside. We're just going to work on the sides for now. And we're just going to lay out our dovetails. So to do this, I'm pretty much going to eyeball the, the end pins. So these are like half pins. So it's just about a 3 16 there. And I'll do 3 16 on the other side. And then we want to mark the center line. I'm just going to eyeball this. That looks like about the middle. So for this, I'm going to... I'm going to use just a quarter inch chisel. We don't want our dovetails too large here. So you can take your actual chisel, bring it down, center it 
about on your pencil line there. And just mark a little outside on each side. Okay, so it's a little wider than my chisel. And now I can take my 1-5 slope and I, I'm going to set it right on that pencil line and make a mark like that. And I'll come over here, same thing. This takes a little getting used to, like which side you're drawing. So if you've ever made dovetails, it's a little bit of a learning curve just to not feel dyslexic actually in some ways like that. See what I just did there? I did drew that that way just so I could show you how that happens. No, but something looks wrong. So this is better to get it now than saw it. So I wanted to actually be way out here where it feels unstable, but it's the right way. Boom. Okay. So now I want to take away this, this, and this. So we're going to be left with our tails there. So to saw that out, I'm going to set it in the vise. Are you going to cut uh, grooves for the drawer bottom before you cut the dovetails? After I do the fronts. Yeah, because then, then I'll have it, I'll know right where to locate it. So that'll be right after the fronts. It's a good question. So I'm doing, I'm drawing these lines across because one of the critical things about getting dovetails to fit well is that they're 90 degrees to across the board. And that, this is where it takes a little getting used to. I'm going to put this clamp on here just to hold these together a little better than they are. All right, so for this, I could use my regular dovetail saw, but it felt tiny and felt like I wanted a little more fineness to the cut. So I'm going to go back. I used to use my Japanese saw. Um, I'm going back to this, and somebody's going to ask me where this came from. This one came from Woodcraft, and all I can tell you, it's a Z. <laughs> it's a Z. <laughs> anyway, they're, they're good saws. I cut the handle off to fit in my tool cabinet. But now I can't fit it because I got a new saw. Thank you guys. You know who you are. I'm going to start now sawing. This is not that big a deal like because I'm not fitting. I want to use the pencil lines because it's I'm not going for super precision at this cut, but I do want to be square across. So I'm going on the pencil line. I'll just cut to the waist side of the line. This one I made my pin a little small so I could take the line. It doesn't matter. The main thing is squareness across. So I'm just going to pull it toward me. And then get that angle. Now I'll come over to this next one. Stay just inside pencil line. And hold that angle. Now I'll get the other side. Sorry, you can't see this, can you? Just imagine it's perfect. We don't have to imagine. It is. I can see it. All right, one more. Can we assume that you're going to show us how you're going to attach? Um, Ron's asking how you're going to attach them. The drawer runners. How you oh. can attach the drawer runners in such a small space. I will show that. Okay. Figured so. If we get there in time. All right, so I'm going to set it now. I'm going to cut across. I'm going to square this in the vise. I want to. I don't know if you can even see that line, but it's a knife line right across here. I'll put a light pencil line in there for you. Can you see that now? Mm -hmm. So I was going to just use the knife line, but that'll work. But if you want to do this with them flush at the ends. I lost flush a little bit there. Okay, there it is. Okay, just go right across and just let the saw touch that knife line. And then, oh, before I flip it out of there, I like to take a chisel, take the big corner, and just, it's right there in front of you, so you can go ahead and just clean this up. Oh, 
I don't think I had to clean anything up. That was like, usually there's a little nub in there, but that was perfect. All right, so then we're gonna flip and hit the other side. You notice I'm doing these together. When you do them together, you only have to mark one, one side and you're squaring across. Not only that, but it gives you better tracking with your saw. If you're going across just a narrow little thing, the saw is harder to track. But once you get into that wider material, it holds it on track more easily for the whole cut. So there again is the line. Here we go. Okay, I gotta get a little deeper here, I think. So come in here. And there we go. We've got our two sides. Now we just have that middle piece to get out. So I'm just gonna take one side and, oh, I meant to do that while we were here. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. This is actually good to get out with a coping saw. We're coming right in here now. I'm gonna cope this out. <laughs> I don't usually, do I'm not day. used to hearing the moans. <laughs> yes, they're standing in for me. <laughs> Start, starting to wonder what kind of noises are made on a regular basis. <laughs> All right, so there, now we've got our inside coped, so we can just, now we just have to chop to the baseline there. And to do that, that's why I used my quarter inch chisel to mark. I could clamp this to the table, which I should do, but I'm in a hurry. So let's screw it up. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just put my knife, my chisel right in the knife line. If I can see the knife line, there it is. And ideally you're chopping halfway. Flip it over. Same thing. The nice thing about the knife line from the marking gauge is it tells you when you're exactly in the right spot. Now I'm gonna come in from the other side. I gotta turn my wrist this way. <laughs> you and you, people in here now see the gymnastics that go on <laughs> when sometimes I'm cutting like this, but it's all good. All right. So then you're gonna just clean out, make sure that inside basically is cleaned out and everything is looking pretty crisp. So there you go for the camera. So now I would be ready. I've got my dovetails done. Let's just do one side. I'm gonna just transfer these marks now over to the end. So remember where our mark line there, that's our top. So this has to go on this side. So that's gonna be marked in there. So I'm gonna come back to the bench. And here I'll take this piece, I'm gonna drop it in. And let's see, I think I'll take that. Now I just wanna, I'm just making them, transferring the marks now. So I'm gonna get it up to about the height of a thickness of one of the sides. And that's just to get it off the table so it doesn't slide around while I'm trying to mark it. Okay, so this is the one that I had there. And now I gotta make sure I'm on the right side. Yes, double check. And lock it back in. So I like to use a little square like this and I can put it across the front, lean it right up. I've got that higher part of the square. So now I can bring the side in and it aligns perfectly with the bottom. And I'm just gonna slide it over until I see the end hit that knife line from my earlier mark. And it's right there. So I'm just gonna hold it right in place, grab marking knife and make a little cut. This time I'm marking with a knife because I need the precision. I'm trying to make two interlocking teeth basically here and it's better to use a knife because you know exactly where you need to cut. 
A very sharp pencil could work if you got used to that, but it's nice to have a knife for this. All right, so now I have my knife, but, and then just to remind myself, I'm taking away this, this time. Can you see those knife lines? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring it out. I'll just transfer, just bring this cut around the corner a little bit. And now I will have to clamp it to the table, but you get to sit down again, so that's nice. Okay, so now I'm just transferring these lines. I want to just be able to see square better when I make this cut. When you get really used to it, you, you don't need these lines, but it's good practice to throw them in there and it makes you a little square on your cuts. Okay, so this time I'm cutting out the wide area here. So I'm going to make my cuts. Now this is where we're gonna cut, we're gonna have our saw just touch the knife line, okay? It's key. You don't, if you miss, miss on the waist side, okay? So here we go. Make sure you get your camera lady to position the light so you can see what you're doing. Beautiful job. <laughs> now the next one. Let it go right down that knife line. It's that easy. Now I'm over sawing. That was very common with period furniture. No worries. Same thing. One more. Okay, so there you go. That's, that will make all our cuts for that part. But now to get this, we've got to chop this material out. So you could do that all with a chisel or we could take it over to the hollow chisel mortise machine, which I'm, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I mean the drill press and use a Forstner bit and just set the depth so it would stop just shy. And you could just, with a force and a bit, cut those out. I decided to not step over there for that. And I already have one where I did that force and a bit cutting, okay? So exact same stage. Just went over to the drill press. I have the fence set like that. The force and a bit comes down, set to the depth. So if you have a lot of drawers, this saves you a lot of time digging that out. Now I just have to clean that out. All right, so. Now I want to chop down the back wall. I got to clean out these sockets here. So I'm just going to set my chisel. Usually I like to relieve it a little bit before I hit the knife line. So I'll just do that. Just get, just basically roughing it out. I'm not going right to the knife line yet. I'm going to leave about a 30 second or so. And then I can come in this way. And I got another knife line at the bottom of this. This is hard to see, I think. Maybe I'll, thanks. All right, so there is another knife line here. I'm gonna come up and I'm just quickly pushing this out to rough it out. So I'm not quite to the knife line there nor there. Now I'm ready to go back and this is the money cut. We're gonna set it right on the knife line here. And I'm going more by feel. I can feel that. I got to, okay. Now we're going to go. So you want us to chop straight down or slightly undercut it like I am there. Just walk the chisel over. And just keep going. And then I'm going to just work it down into the corners. Just by rocking it like this. Hey, 
and we're going to, let's go a little wider for this. Can we fit that? Yeah. Okay, I'm right in the knife line at the bottom and we're gonna push. Just break those out and it should break right out. So for someone seeking a dovetail saw for the first time, would you recommend a Japanese or a dovetail saw? A Japanese saw like this is cheaper. If you wanna just try it and um, it's less money getting in on it. It's better to buy, if you're gonna buy a, a, a good a dovetail saw, you wanna get a decent one, but you can spend a lot of money on a typical. It's really up to you whether you wanna try cutting on the push or the pull stroke. The nice thing about these too is that the blades are replaceable. Once you, the teeth are brittle, they break out, they get a little bent, so you can always get a fresh, a fresh saw. All right, so now I gotta just get in to these corners. So I'm gonna let the chisel just follow my earlier knife cut. I mean my earlier saw cut. And that's it. A smaller chisel will get down into the corners. They do make these fishtail chisels, but sorry, I'm covering you. Everything has to be square and true going in. If I was rising on this lower floor, it would jam as I try to press it in. If I'm closing any way, which way, if they're flaring wider, it's going to get real loose and when I'm trying to connect it. So let's just see how that turned out. This is the one that we just cleaned out and this is the one it was knifed around for. So let's see if we can press it in this way. Usually I do it down on the bench. There we go. That presses in pretty nicely. Let me press it in this way. Okay, so that looks pretty sweet. Now, someone asked earlier, when do you cut that groove for the drawer bottom? Well, this is when you wanna cut it. Okay, sure. so I've got both sides are in. And at this point, you want to make your cut for the groove, and it's going to be right about here, okay? Because you need to be high enough with your groove on the inside that when you run it across the front, you don't clip this corner, and you'll end up with a hole. So you want to be at least, the bottom of the groove should be about there. And we're only going to make an eighth of an inch wide groove here because it's just a small drawer, and that's all you need. So we're going to do that on the table saw, and I've already got it set up. And you can just watch me go over there. Those are your Veritas chisels, correct? Yes. So I'll make a quick mark, orientation mark. All I, need, all I know is I'm going to be right along here. Yep. So I've got the saw set the right Thank distance you. from the fence, and I'm up about a good strong eighth of an inch. I'm going about the half the thickness there. So we're going to just go here and straight across. I've got all my pieces oriented. That's correct. I'm going to use this gripa to push. That gives me better control for small pieces. Here we go. Right. Once you've got that sawn, then you can rip your back piece to length. You know what I forgot to tell you about um, at the very beginning was when working with my um, with sizing the pieces. Uh, where's the one I had? Five. Okay. So when working with sizing these pieces, I had to cut them to length too. I didn't say anything about that, but you want to cut them. You get them dimensioned to my width and my thickness, but when I cut them to length, I, I cross cut these on the table saw so that they would just press fit in. See how that just is just gently snug? So if I let it, it will stay. And I cross cut the back at the same time so that I have kind of a parallel channel in there, right? And then the sides, I'm just gonna cut to length 
so that they don't quite hit the back here. I'm not going to stop them on the back. I'm going to use a different kind of stop. So that press fit will end up cleaning up. Once you hand plane after it's assembled, it'll fit beautifully. So let's um, take, here's our drawer this far along. We've got our fronts all dovetailed. Now we just have to quickly knock out the back. And this, this does go pretty fast because this is a through dovetail. The front was a half blind. So you had to do that digging out part and that just takes longer. But a through dovetail is a quick process. Once again, you're gonna cut the tails on the sides first, but the tails cannot go all the way to the bottom because you need to slide, your drawer bottom is gonna slide in from the back. So everything's gonna start right above that groove. So we reestablish a bottom where we're going to locate that first half pin. To do that, all I have to do, let me squeeze these together a little better. I'm gonna take my square and I wanna draw a line right across the top of these. So I'll just come in here. There, see that? Right across the top of the group. That's gonna be the bottom of my drawer back. See that? I rip, I forgot to say that too. I rip my drawer side, my drawer back to the width right above that groove, okay? There we are. So now once I've got that, I can, once again, I want to, I'll square that line down. This is gonna be the bottom of a half pin. So I'm just gonna come right here. Let's see, I'll go right about there and right about there. And then again, I'm gonna pick the middle, use my, the, my quarter inch. And now we can go ahead and mark. Here we go. Mark my tails. I got a smaller space here because we've, we lost some space to the uh, drawer bottom, but that's that. Now we're gonna take out this, this, and this. So we're gonna be left with our dove tails. The tail is called the tail because it flares like the shape of a dove's tail, that white area there. And then the dark that you see coming through are the pins. So that's just the terminology I'm using. All right, so once I've got that, I can put it back in to the vise. And we're gonna now square our lines across again. So we saw true. Just put one right here. And lastly, there we go. And we're ready to saw. Now, this is kind of interesting. If you didn't do it this way, that saw would want to drift into that hole right there when you're making that. I missed one line here. So because we've got them sandwiched together like this and the gap is in the middle, the saw is supported on both sides of the cut so it won't drift in there and you'll be able to make a nice clean cut. I'm making this right so I just leave the pencil line just barely. I want to make this right on top of that groove. And that's a straight down cut. Now I can go ahead with the others. I'm going to angle over. Yeah, I've been thinking about how to set yourself up. If you wanted to try woodworking and didn't want to buy all the expensive tools, but you wanted tools that were really effective, uh, you know, I, I was thinking this kind of tool, like a Japanese saw is pretty inexpensive for the quality of cut you can get. And then you could try the other saw. You might, by that time, though, you might be 
I might be uh, too acclimated, but I, I think it's good. I think it's good to know both. So I like using them both occasionally. I tend to use the Lee Nielsen more for dovetails, but these little guys are fun this way. All right, so this is the same routine as the last time, except now I'm going, I've just got a smaller bit to get out. Make sure I can see that line. And here we go. Okay. Clean it out. Remind me, Tom, it's PMV or PVM 11? Veritas chisels. It's a PM V11. PM V11. All right. Um, so this, this is pretty much the same as the other side. So we will just be this one I actually need to use, but so I. So once again, you're going to saw it out, and now we just need to clean that out, and we can transfer the lines. Okay, we'll use our quarter inch. Right here. Now I can't fit it in this little spot, so I have a chisel that I actually ground down to a little more than an eighth of an inch. Uh, this is an old marples, and you can either do that or maybe you'll find a chisel that small. And it works well for that. The inside, same thing. And then down here, well, we could use the quarter for this. We've got room. Okay. Now we just need to clean those out again between the teeth. And this is going to set us up to have dovetails sitting right on top of that groove. Push this on there. That marking knife isn't anything uh, particular, right? That you use? Um, I think we have a link to that, don't we? Yeah, I can put a link to it later, Dennis. Okay, so there we go. We've got our teeth defined. And now this is where now the back gets transferred, but you want the back to be oriented and you want to knife this so that it's sitting right on top of that groove, right on that line. So the way to do that is I just cut a little piece of masonite or something quarter of an inch thick. I added a piece of tape so that it would fit in here nicely. So look, fits in there nice and snug. And that acts as a good stop for me to use so I can rest the bottom on that while I knife it out, okay? So we're gonna bring this right over into the vise. And we'll, then we get that snugged up, push this back. And there, this is when we use that little piece, bring it up. And I like to use this to help square, make sure I'm square. So that I can see everything looks pretty flush. And once again, we'll grab our marking knife and just mark our pins. I mean, I got a small one down here, but it'll work. They don't have to be perfectly symmetrical. That's the beauty of it is that it is handmade. And 
You know, this is not made by a machine right here. But there you go. Now we're going to cut this away and leave our pins. But this is where you'd have to dig it out normally on the other one. But with the through dovetails, you just saw. So I just get it perpendicular in the saw, in the, in the vise. And now I'm just going to cut to the waist side. And here again, using that knife line as the guide, we're just going to saw. Just let the saw touch the knife line and we're sawing plumb straight down. <laughs> to our marking gauge line. Don't Same cut thing. It off. Just let it touch. Yeah. <laughs> if I screw this up, I, I look at I've only lost a tiny bit of material. That's the nice thing about making little drawers. But I have lost the time. Okay, and lastly, always on the waist side of the line here. The nice thing about the Japanese saw too in these little cases is it just feels more delicate, but it's easier to start because it's so sharp. It just takes a light touch to, sh to start. Now, here we can, rather than dig it out, we're going to use the coping saw. Okay, that makes a quick work of it. And then the other side. Okay, now we can get it flat on the table and chop these out. Not sure. Okay, now I'm going to go to the line. Okay, now I've got that clean. Now we'll come to the other side. And this may tear out a little bit, but it's okay. It's internal. It doesn't really weaken it. <laughs> what? You can't, can't see me can't either. Get the best view because the material is so small. Yeah, my fingers are covering it all up. I see that. Okay, now you can see, okay? Mm -hmm. So I just want to do the final little touch up, cleaning up, making sure everything's crisp down in, make sure no mound of material on the end grain there. Anything that could potentially be in way of this fully seating, you're just, you're just cleaning that up. It doesn't take much to do this. But here you go, you've got the, the line there, here, we still have our, so we can pull that away and let's see how it fits. We'll just set it in there and then just press it in and press it together. There you go. Nice little dump tail. Sweet little one. All right, so I would do that on the other side, of course, and I would end up with a drawer in this condition. And I've got my drawer ready to glue up. So to glue up is pretty quick and easy. You're just going to put a little glue in the sockets. No, no problem with your coping saw uh, being a different kerf than your Japanese saw, correct? No, I, if you notice the technique I was using, I didn't mention it, but I was leaning the saw away from the finished material, so I was never cutting into it. I started my cut leaning away or leaning into the waist side. So there was no chance of me wrecking it that way. Okay, so with the glue, I'm just putting a little bit of glue down on each side of the pins here. And this drawer is one of the actual drawers, as was the one I just cut. Those are going to be in the cabinet. I'm just trying to do a sequence here so we can move right along. All right, so once you get the drop of glue there, you can 
I just take a little paddle. You, we used to always brush it at pugs, but little ones like this, it's much easier just to paddle it and get it evened out on there. It doesn't take a ton of glue. This is not coming apart. You could see the genius of dovetails is the mechanical fit. The glue just keeps it in place, basically. All right, so we got those. Then we're going to just get some on these pins from the sockets. Let's get a little more in there. Can you see that? I'm just making sure it's on the sides of the pins there. Okay, that looks good. Now, with that all set, we can assemble. So we're gonna take one of the sides, put the groove side up. Now we know this is the full dovetail here, so we're gonna put our front in there, line up the groove. You wanna make sure the groove lines up. <laughs> it won't, you'll never get your drawer bottom in that way. And then uh, we're gonna get the back, pencil line out and up, goes right in here. I had to stop and think if I glued this, but I did. And I'm gonna just push that. You gotta get a nice clean rag from the glue bucket. Growing up, my brother Larry and I used to get, I don't know, we just used to get in a lot of issues. We, we got stitches a fair amount for kids. I, I, I don't think we ever took our kids to the hospital for stitches. But my mother had a red towel <laughs> for that reason, so that when she put it on, we wouldn't panic and see all the blood. So I think I'm going to use a gray towel and make you think it's not really dirty. It's not really dirty. All right. So there we go. We've got all that clean. And the nice thing, the glue, when it gets in there, it's kind of a healing balm. You know, it's like there's a little swelling going on. If you had any imperfections, they would kind of heal over a little bit with this. And they look really sweet. And then in here, I'm just going to clean up a little of that glue. And we gotta, we're just going to put a clamp on this for a second just to pull it in tight. Once these are seated, they won't, there's no like force making them want to come out again. Okay. Here we go. So I'm just going to use this Bessie clamp here and set the clamp so that it's just behind the teeth there, just behind the pins. Okay. And I'm just going to snug it. I can feel it fully seated right there. That feels good. And then do the same here. I don't want to pull this too hard because I'm not actually on the pins and I could just curve my side, but I'm just snugging this just to fully seat them. Okay. And I can take them off and that's it. That was fast. <laughs> and now I could measure this for square, you know, let's do that. We'll go the diagonal. We should be the same. All right. A little over nine and a quarter, just over nine and a quarter. This is actually good, but the test, this is for the one spot. So this is going one, two, three, four. So you can also let it dry in the spot. I've got the water on there, so it, it's kind of binding. I'm going to leave it out and just square it. <sighs> so anyway, I know this is square and it's fully seated. I'm happy with that. I'm going to set it aside and we're good to go. Now let's get one that's already dry and I'll show you the final fitting to the opening. So here's the one for the two spot. And this is dry, all the, exactly the same condition as that one, just not, that one's not dry. This is for the second spot. So let's try this. Okay, see that's a nice and snug in there. And it goes in, beautiful. But we need to clean this up. We still have the pencil mark and we're not exactly flush here. So just a couple swipes on each side with a hand plane, we should be sliding in there like butter. So let's get our plane 
And for, for little drawers like this, I mean, you could put it in your vise, but I like using one of these hooks where you can just take a board, clamp it in, and it's just a little narrower than the gap. So I can just slip the drawer front right over here and plane away and then just turn it around without having to re-clamp it in there. But before I do this, I want to get a clamp on this end, okay? And now, let's just do a few skims. Now before we do this, we've got end grain here coming up. And if I go right off the end, I may splinter that out a little bit on the end. So if I just take my plane first, and I'm just going to chamfer, let's do it this way, just about a little chamfer like that. That's all you need to ease those fibers so they don't tear out. And I can go straight off the end, okay? Put it back in, and here we go. Just have some scrap curly maple laying around, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's what that is. I want to just slightly advance this. Okay, here we go. Okay, nice little shaving off that side. That's very clean. See, at first, I'm just hitting the pins. Now I can go all the way. Just go until you get good, clean shaving on both sides. Let's see how it fits. Now it's kind of floating, but I'm just a little bit of a rub. Doesn't take much to get it perfect. That's perfect fit. So that perfect piston fit, you won't get any kind of rubbing around. Now I could hit the back as well. I would just go across and clean that. But before doing that, I wanna just go ahead and show you the method for cutting the um, drawer guides. Now for this one, I'm going to use, like I said earlier, a slot. I'm gonna cut actually a groove on the side and I'm gonna just stop right behind that pin. I'm gonna make it as long here. So what I wanna do, make sure I'm flush all around here on the top. Just gonna go around one time here. Now I want to cut that groove. And so what I've got for the runners are actually gonna be these little pieces of oak. They don't, they're little quarter saw pieces of white oak. They don't have to be that. And this is gonna be my drawer runner. So this is gonna to attach to the side of the opening. And so I have to cut a groove right here that will be centered. I've already set up a 3 8 inch straight cutter on the router table. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this. So here's the thing. These little lines are going to tell me when to stop. I'm going to come down here, and when I get right to the front of the drawer right there, I want to stop because I've allowed myself five-eighths of an inch. Drawer front is nine-sixteenths, so that's going to give me a little close there. Then when I come this way, I'll drop it in on that line, which is on the other side. I'm going to drop it down, so now I'll be safely five-eighths beyond and then I'll run it out this way. And I'm referencing off the top of my drawer for this. All right, here we go. So you see what we've got? We've got a nice groove. We stopped just shy of our pin there. So we want to just clean that up. And I'll just use a chisel like so. 
and I'm just going to use the guidelines and just get it started. There we go. And now I can take a three quarter inch chisel and we're going to go just behind. Well, let's start here first. I have a question from I here. mean a three eighth oh. inch chisel. I'm sorry, I said three quarter. Sure. Do you ever use hard maple for runners, like in the Gersh yeah. Gersnatch? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, it's just something little like this is so light use that the uh, amount of wood you could use is pretty wide open. So, I mean, this the weakest link in this is the white pine, but these are, these are very light drawers and they get such little use. So I would not fret about using just about anything you want to use. So there you go. You're just going to clean it up like that. And then we're going to attach the piece to the side so it stops. I'm going to get it to stop right there. I made a little template here that's going to give me a five eighths offset. So like that. So I'm going to be a little deeper. So this drawer is going to go in and it's going to actually be slightly recessed. I'd rather be slightly recessed than I could always put a little shim on the end of my pin here. Maybe with a piece of leather to make it quietly slow closing, right? But I also, to set this up, to put it in and get it aligned right, I've got a little spacer that I, I ripped. So it goes right to the top of the groove. This is just a space piece. I'm a little bit proud here, okay? Just not even a 32nd. That's gonna help me mount the stick to the side of my opening. So when my drawer goes in, it's gonna be slightly down by a 32nd. Let me just show you how one of these goes in and we'll be wrapping it up. I set my spacer in. I want to put my runner this far down. I'm going to put my, I want it five eighths back from the front edge. So I'll take this little spacer piece I made, jig, and I'll just clamp it in there. I'll put a clamp there, clamp there. All right, so now I just need to glue, I'm going to just glue this in. It's so light. So I've got this Type 1 CA glue. They're new with this Type 1. I'm going to use the gel. It's, it seems like a beautiful glue and I'm going to use the accelerant because we're in a hurry. Now I'm going to use the gel. I just want a thin line because I don't want it to gob this thing up and make it bad. But this thing will set in like less than 30 seconds if I just hold it there, right? So I'm going to get all ready. I'm all ready. I'm going to put a little line of gel glue down the middle of this. Not too much. And this stick doesn't go all the way to the back. Here it comes. Uh, quick question. That plane that you were using a bit ago, was that number five? Yes. Okay. Number five jack plane. We talked about those two weeks ago. Check out that video, how to use hand planes effectively. That was featured. All right, so there I've got my gel on there. I'm going to hit with the accelerant, get it in there, get it right up to my top, push it to the top, and press. <laughs> and breathe deeply, the accelerant. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to just hold it in pressure. We'll go together, honey. I've got it all glued in there. I'm feeling some moisture on my fingertips. What is that? <laughs> I'll come and visit you. All right. So thank you for joining us tonight. <laughs> All right. No, seriously, folks, I actually think it's successful. All right. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to pull this piece out. Now I can take my shins away. Everything's perfectly aligned. Okay. Now I can just reuse this on the other side. Setting up the time to make these little jigs helps you so much and it reassures you that you're not going to mess it up. Now, I do have um, one here where I already put the sides in and I have a drawer that I already cleaned up on both sides. Okay, just push it one side further than the other one. And 
The last thing I'm just going to really show you, someone asked about the drawer bottom. I just took some pine, just ripped it really thin and it ends up being probably almost, I would say a 64th less than 3 16 Actually, I don't know. It's close to that. Uh, it looks like that, but I know it's, it's more than an eighth because it doesn't fit right in that groove. I have to cut a little taper to it. So all you do is take this piece, like let's say we wanted to fit this one to our drawer. I cut it so it fits just right the length and leave a little bit of play side to side. But you see, I can't fit it in there. So this is a fun time. You can use your little uh, block plane. I'm gonna use my more aggressively set Stanley. I'm gonna turn, okay, see? And I would just hold it at a, a shearing angle and we're just going to cut a nice little bevel on there. And flip it around. Okay. And so you can test one side at a time and see if you're there yet, if it's bottoming it out. If it is, it isn't. You're just going to keep doing that. You can switch to a a lighter plane at the end. And once you get that slid all the way in, you're going to do the same on the front edge. So you would just hold it this way and just keep trial fitting until you get it fully seated like this one. Okay. I just took it a little more time and I, all I've got the exact same right off the, the plane bevel. And then you can slide it in to your drawer. It goes right in that groove. See how it goes right under that? Our pin on the back, everything's nicely aligned. And it sits right in there. I left it a little long so it could shrink in the winter. But in order to do that, we would just glue that in the front. I would glue in a little glue block like this. I put a little glue on both sides and glue that in. Now the drawer bottom is held in the front. But on the back, I want to allow it expansion and contraction because this grain's moving the other way. So the last thing I need is that a little screw with a, with a washer on it. And so that would go right in here. And I've got that. I would use brass usually, but I had this screw, so I'm going to use that. So you just gently snug it. So now once that's glued in, that can expand and contract and you have your finished little drawer and you're ready to try it in your cabinet. And I'm not going to put any hardware on this because it has a little finger hold under here. It's just simpler. And there it is. It goes in just like butter. And it's good to put some wax on your runners and you're going to stop just a little recessed from the back. And there you have it, how to make a small drawer in a little over an hour. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with us a little tonight. Remember, if you enjoy this content, you want to go deeper with us, head on over to epicwoodworking.com and be sure to like, share, and by all means, subscribe. We'll look forward to seeing you next time.